17, I just signed a new contract in the back of my form. I got my first call for a national team and well, I scored the winning goal. It's stuff every kid dreams about. My followers on social media went through the roof. All my gaffers were really chuffed with me and they used me as a role model for other players in the squad and younger players at the club. I felt untouchable. One day after training, this guy came up to me in the car park. He said he was a big fan and that he followed on my social media. He said he could sort me out with a free pair of boots. I think it seemed a bit dodgy at first, but he gave me a brand new pair of 250 quid boots there and then. You know, I convinced myself it was harmless, but it did feel a bit strange. I felt like if I wore them, then there was no going back. A few weeks later, I got a call from the guy asking me to take a yellow card the next game. It was a derby match. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. I told him to get lost. I was literally just about to hang up when he told me how much money I could make and explained how easy it was. He convinced me to do it. I mean, he promised me it would only be the one time and that once I'd done it, there was no chance of getting caught. In the lead up to the game, I felt anxious. I felt that everyone could tell something was up. Just before the match started, I got a message from the guy telling me to take the yellow card between the 16th and 18th minute. I couldn't concentrate on anything else other than getting the yellow card at the right time. I kept on asking the ref how long in we were, and when we got to the 15th minute, my heart started racing. The other team had the ball, so I chased after their man and pulled him back by the shirt. The referee blew his whistle, gave the foul, and gave me a yellow card. I felt instant relief. It was over, and I could finally actually concentrate on the game. But I played rubbish. At half time, the coach gave me a really hard time. I'll never forget how disappointed he was in me. I don't remember much more of the match. I got subbed off early on in the second half, and to be honest, I was just glad it was all over. A couple of days later, a brand new pair of boots arrived for me at the club. I didn't want them, it felt weird, so I just left them. I checked my bank, and right enough, £500 had been put in my account. I didn't know how to feel. I just remember really wanting to tell someone, but who could I tell? I just got my head down and focused on my training. I thought it was all over. A couple of weeks passed and I managed to put it all behind me. No one was none the wiser, thankfully. Then, out of the blue, I got another text from the guy asking me to take a red card in the next match. Another local derby. It was a cup tie too. I felt sick. I texted them back saying there was no way I was going to do it and for them to leave me alone. I got a call from a withheld number and they said that if I didn't do it, then they'd tell my gaffer and report me to the association. I was trapped. I wanted to speak to my parents, but in all honesty, I felt like I couldn't face them. I eventually agreed to do it. I had no choice. In the warm-up, I felt completely on edge. I just wanted it to be over and done with as quickly as possible. down. I'd let my teammates down. I'd let everyone who'd ever supported me down. That wasn't even the end of it. A few months later, a couple of police officers came to my door. They said they wanted to talk about match fixing with me. I told them everything. They took my phone and my club suspended me. I was banned by the association. Three years. I was banned for three years from playing the game that I loved. My club sacked me and I wasn't allowed to play football on any level. And playing football was all that I ever wanted to do. I threw my career away. I threw everything away. Looking back now, I realise that this happens in a lot of sports and all over the world. I never felt like I'd been exploited, but that's exactly what happened. Don't be as naive as me. I wanted to tell my story to stop it happening to someone else. It's not worth it.
Every day Interpol works on cases of match fixing or competition manipulation. And as the Secretary General of Interpol, I am well placed to confirm that this crime is not just confined to Scotland. It happens in all sports, on every continent, at every level. The result of a competition in one country can generate criminal profits in another, making it a global issue. An incentive in exchange for a missed shot, a disqualification or a penalty. This interference undermines the basic sporting principle of always doing your best. But it's not all up to you, the players. Coaches and parents have an active role to play as well. So let's agree to this. We'll do the police work so that you can focus on the game. Because after all, the outcome should be determined by passion, skills and effort, not by a criminal thirst for profit.